Today, we're going to have Mandy Fry come up. We're going to have Sharon Harley. We have Audrey Harrison and Colby King. So come on up, ladies, and we're going to get going here. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. What in your journey brought you here, and maybe even how does surfing kind of tie into it? And we're going to start with Mandy. Okay. All right. Hi, guys. Um, it's very nice to be here. It's very nice to be in a room full of like-minded people. I'm, I don't get to do that a lot um, in, in, my, in what I do in my life, so thank you for having me. Um, I am Mandy Fry. I am married and have two kids. I live in San Clemente. Um, I'm married to an obsessive big wave surfer. Um, I have two kids who are also very obsessed with surfing. Um, I enjoy it, um, but I am now mostly the photographer on the sand, um, unless we are in Taparua or Hawaii, and I love the warm water and like a nice, soft, mm. long wave. I feel that. <laughs> um, I came here, you wanted me to keep going with my story? Sure. Okay. Sure. I came here to California when I was 18. Um, I am from Kentucky, although I've lived in many places in the United States. Um, I landed in Kentucky in high school. My dad was with IBM, which stands for I've Been Moved. So we moved a lot. And every time we moved, I had to start a new school. I think I went to 12 different schools between elementary and middle and high school. And every time we'd move, we would find a new home church. And I suppose lucky enough to, um, to be moving so much that my parents were very involved in every church. So they planted churches. My dad would become an elder. Um, my mom ultimately ended up working for the big mega church in, um, in Kentucky, in Lexington, where we ended up living. So that was my way of getting involved um, in the community. And um, it was in high school where I started drifting very, very far away from the Lord. And um, really challenging my family and got in the car at 18 and drove cross country to California and left my mom and dad standing on the driveway. <laughs> if my kids do that to me, I might die. <laughs> um, but I came to Kentucky and was just um, very, very focused on um, creating a life and a career for myself out here. Uh, this was pretty much pre-internet, so I didn't even know what California meant. Um, I didn't know any much of anything about it. I just knew that it was, um, I was just, I was called. No, no other way of explaining it. I felt like God had me by the back of the neck and he was just guiding me and brought me four days across the country in a car by myself with no cell phone because there was no cell phones at that time um, and got me here safely. And I figured out how to get myself through design school. Um, my first job was at OP, designing kids. Um, I was there for a year went to Roxy and became a swim designer um, for six years. I then went to Billabong for almost 15 years, and I was the women's creative director for all categories across the world. And then I started my own brand, Amuse Society, um, co-founded it with two partners, um, did that for five years, thought I was going to retire in 2018. Um, I had the first opportunity to stay home with my kids, and that was a huge blessing for a year, um, finally not having a nanny and being able to be at home and be a mom. But I quickly found out 365 days later that I wasn't that good at it because I kept hiring babysitters because I was taking one meeting after another. Um, I couldn't stop. I was building brand decks, building another brand at my dining room table, um, and which led me to um, the place where I'm at now, which um, I'm now a partner and president of a women's company called Z Supply, and that has been such a huge blessing to um, be a part of a female-driven company with like-minded people and be able to lead a team of 85 and do what I can to make a difference um, in their life. Um, so Perfect. that's where I'm at today. Amazing. Thanks, yeah. Mandy. Good. All right, Colby. I don't think, oh, it is on. Hi, my name's Colby. Um, I'll just go ahead and say my age now, if anyone's wondering. I'm 26. <laughs> I just got married in April. That's my husband. And then I am from a very small podunk town called Wakulla. Um, it's in Florida. We are famous for breeding oysters and football players. So I did not grow up surfing. Surfing was never on the radar. I grew up hunting. I grew up like mud bogging. I grew up fishing. And then eventually when I came to Jacksonville, I had a roommate that 
is just the definition of a water woman. She represented America in Australia for lifeguard competitions. She loved the Lord, and she just ripped. And she poured into me. Um, and now I surf. <laughs> and I get to work for Jacksonville Radio. We're a cluster of seven local radio stations in Jacksonville. And people ask, how, how did I get to this position of being on air? And in sixth grade, believe it or not, I did not have a date to the school dance. God forbid. So I got to MC the school dance, and I remember introing some lame early 2000s song that was a hit, and at the time I wanted to be a professional motocross racer. So I was dressed in my motocross gear, and I introed this song, and I told all of my classmates where the snacks were. And I went home, and I told my mom and dad that I wanted to be on the radio. And now I get to host a morning show. We have just under a million listeners in Jacksonville. It's called Gary and Colby in the Morning. And I voice and produce commercials. And I get to kind of highlight local nonprofits in the community. And I'm also, I just joined staff with Christian Surfers now as their East Coast Girls Regional Coordinator. And that's me. All right, Sharon, we'll bounce over to you. Hello. On. Yes, okay. mm -hmm. I'm Sharon. I'm married to a guy named Roy. Uh, some of you may know him. Um, so yeah, uh, we have two kids, Kaylin and Nathan. You've heard of Kaylin, the one betrothed to Moni <laughs> 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 um, Yeah, so I, Roy and I met 26 years ago. I was finishing up my time in uni, and um, I pretty much married Christian surfers. Mm -hmm. And um, when Early days, Roy and I pioneered it together, and I was working full-time as a teacher, which allowed us to fund the ministry. I married a man with zero money. <laughs> My parents' worst nightmare, but um, no, they embraced him beautifully. Um, so yeah, so I worked full-time with Roy, and um, well, full-time supporting Roy in a supportive role with CS, and um, it's been an incredible journey, um, and so amazing if I'm had time to reflect on this question going how we got from there to here is pretty incredible. But um, in a quick nutshell, uh, a couple of years later, Roy, Roy, whenever we go to a conference together, we leave and he goes, we're moving to France. And I go, okay, we're moving to France. And then the next conference, we're moving to Hawaii. I go, okay, we're moving to Hawaii. <laughs> but then a couple of years later, Roy said, we're moving to Jeffrey's Bay, which is still in South Africa. And I was like, nope, not doing it. I've been down this road many times with him. Um, and I actually did say, no, we're not moving to Jeffrey's Bay. <laughs> and he was like, okay, I really feel strongly. And I was like, okay, off you go. We'll have a long-distance relationship. I'll look after the kids. <laughs> um, but I think it was about two years later, this hadn't left Roy. Um, and he kind of said, God, you work in Sharon. And um, when the time is right, this will happen. And about two years later, Nathan was... Still, still in the tummy, actually, and he said, move to J-Bay. And without even thinking, I went, yes. And God knew that that would be the right time for us to make that move. And so we moved the national office to Jeffreys Bay and pioneered and started the first sea salt program in J-Bay, um, which was amazing. And um, yeah, and the transitions have kept going until we find ourselves here. Um, and so excited to be here and a privilege to share the stage with these lovely ladies. Mm, wonderful. Thanks, Sharon. I know. <laughs> All right. Audrey, let's hear your story. Uh, hello. <laughs> I'm Audrey. I'm French. You're going to hear that with my accent. Um, I live in Hosogo, southwest France, where we had the international gathering in 2018. I'm married to an American man, Pao. And we have two young kids, three and five, who are here as well. Um, what brought me here today, um, I didn't grow up in a Christian family. I grew up actually outside Paris. And um, when I was 13 years old, a, a new guy came to school, and he came from Hosogor. And he brought his surfing magazines to school every day, and I discovered surfing for the first time through surfing magazines. And um, that summer, I was 13, I asked my parents if we could go to the southwest of France to try surfing. So we all did, and um, my two sisters and I fell in love with surfing, and that's how it all started. 
And um, when I was 17 years old, I had the, the, the opportunity to go to Australia for a year as an exchange student to learn English. And I lived in Maroubra in the eastern suburbs in Sydney. And I lived with a pastor and his wife. And in his church, there was the local uh, Christian service chapter, the Maroubra Christian service chapter. Uh, that was 1999. And I became a Christian over there. Um, through the church and Christian surfers. And um, a year later, I, I heard that I had to go back to France and that I had to bring to France what I had found in Australia. Mm, amazing. Awesome. It's, it's fun to listen to you ladies because as you're sharing your story, you could see just the passion for what you do, whether it's your vocation, being a mom, whatever it is, but you could just see it really come out of you. So with that, what are the biggest stresses either in your vocation or raising your kids, and what is it that you just love about your life? We're going to start with Sharon. <laughs> Sharon, you wrote the question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> that was the one question I didn't have good answers to. <laughs> Um, the biggest stresses, I think, for me, well, I don't surf, so when we entered into Christian Surfers and married it, I go, Lord, what are you doing? I don't surf. I don't particularly like the ocean. I live 30 minutes away. Like, what are you doing? But um, I think that used to be a very big stress of mine in ministry, going, how do I fit into a surfing space when I don't participate in the sport? Um, and I must say, God's been amazing, and I love the, the saying, you know, that every surfer and every surfing community would come to know and follow Jesus, whether that is through the relationships we've built has definitely brought me into the surfing community. I have Roy and my kids that just are frothing surfers all the time, and I am the beach dweller is my title, <laughs> beach dweller and photographer. Um, so I think for initially that was one of my biggest concerns of how do I... Uh, contribute, how am I valuable in this space? But um, I have met many amazing beach dwellers through this organization, <laughs> many that have impacted my life, and we share such a commonality in that space, and it's really been amazing. Um, one of the other stresses, I guess, is, and Brett spoke about it, is that tug of war between ministry and family and how to navigate that. And um, Roy and I have certainly had some wonderfully intense moments about how that works, and I had to say that I think the word I hate Christian surfers has come out of my mouth at some point many days, many years ago, um, just because of that torn between Christian surfers has taken priority in our home, we got into crazy amounts of debt over it, and um, God redeemed all of that, and he's incredibly faithful. But um, I think that is the constant sort of stress of navigating the balance between ministry and kids, um, especially when the kids were much younger and Roy would leave for two to three weeks and managing the fort. Obviously, as they've got older, that's become easier. And we've also put good boundaries in place. Ten days is the rule. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're flying across the world. Ten days is the rule, um, give or take. Mm, so, um, yeah, that's probably it. Mm, that's good. That's what was the of... second part of that question? That you, was you it. covered it all. Okay. Or, oh, actually, what do you love about it? What is it about Christian oh, surfers that yeah. you love? We're going to kind of put that... Don't worry, I won't make you answer that one. But <laughs> what is it you love about Christian surfers? You know, as I said, you know, I love this family. God has given me a love for this surf culture and surf community that is inexplicable because in the normal world, you go, well, you don't even participate in the sport. And that's normally where your love for a community comes from. Mm -hmm. um, I just love the warmth, the transparency, the realness. There's no pretend when it comes to this world. And um, yeah, I, am, I feel welcomed in this space, even though I'm not in the ocean, I'm on the beach. And um, God is, yeah, I stood behind here, every conference I just cry at the back, because I just see these beautiful hands raised and going, we're a family across the world. When we traveled for the year, when we were transitioning into the role, just that feeling of warmth and global family, no matter where we are, there's, um, there's the love. And, mm, yeah. Amazing. And who would be leading those UNO games on the beach? 
Exactly. <laughs> I learned how to play speed uno yes. yesterday. You learned with well. With the world champion. <laughs> All right, Audrey, we'll go over to you. What are, yeah, absolutely. What are some things about your vocation you could share? I don't know if you shared what your role is in Christian Surfers, but your vocation, some of the stresses, and some things you love about it. So I'm the national coordinator for Christian Surfers in France. Um, one thing I love <clears throat> is um, the fact that growing up, I didn't know that you could be a Christian and a surfer. In France, Christianity is mostly the Catholic Church, and, um, and surfing is really cool and trendy. So I never imagined that these two words could go together. And when I got to Murbra uh, at the age of 17, for the first time, uh, I felt like I had met people that I could relate to. Mm. And that's the story I hear um, every month in France, that some people tell me, well, when we run into Christian surfers for the first time, we realize that we could be a Christian and a surfer and that it could go together. Mm, that's beautiful. All right, Mandy, what about in your life? The stressors and the, what you love about your vocation? It's a very loaded question um, because there's so many stresses between being a mom, being a leader, working full-time, trying to have, make time for your, um, your time with the Lord, trying to make time for your you know, love of the ocean, your time for friends. So um, life is very full, especially with a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. Um, and leading a big team. But what I love about it is um, at work, I'm, I'm fully there and present, and I love leading teams. I love being the light. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a lot of opportunity to talk about my faith with, um, with my team. Um, as you can imagine, it's a fine line that I have to walk in a corporate environment. Um, but I love being that light, and um, for those who see through me and see who I really am. Um, it's really amazing relationships that I've built and women that have come with me from brand to brand to brand and they follow me and those are the women who really see um, who I am and we can have some deep, meaningful relationships and they have a lot of love and respect from, from my faith. Um, for those who aren't believers um, in my line of work, um, just continuing to be um, a light and stand out and be something that's different, even though they might not be able to put their finger on it. Um, that's definitely something I love, and I love being that person for them. Um, when I'm home, I, I, I dive straight in at about 6.30 right into homework, um, and we'll do homework until 10 o'clock if I have to. I love, love, love being a mom, and I love bringing what I have um, in my faith into my kids and love watching their faith grow. Um, what stresses me out about it all is that I want to be it all and I want to do it all. And so I add a lot to my plate. Um, I just recently started a foundation and focusing on education and trying to figure out how to align that between home life and, um, and work life. And I think overall, just figuring out how to merge my life at all times. I don't like to be um, segmented and just have my personal life, my work life, my home life, my, my family life. I like it all to merge. And um, getting my kids mm -hmm. to be a part of my work is, is a big one and communicating with them so that they feel a part of it. Amazing. There's a reason people are following you. Yeah. You know, that light in you is what they're following. Yeah. So that's amazing that they're going brand to brand with you. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Colby. So I am in a very different season than these women. Um, <laughs> I do not have kids, so I'm not stressed about that. Uh, <laughs> however, I, like, like I mentioned, I am newly married, and honestly, being on staff with Christian Surfers is such a major blessing, but we dated for five years, uh, and now I'm gone a lot. Michael's not here. He's in school full-time, which is another blessing Christian Surfers brings. I'm just kind of intermingling the two. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, being gone as a newly married couple is super rough. And then I also think like, man, ministry looks so different every day. And one of the struggles for me was for so long, surfing was a breather. Like my husband, Michael knew, my friends knew if Colby's going to surf and she didn't invite you, like she's going to go surf and just talk to the Lord. And now sometimes I feel guilty for that 
because I think, oh my gosh, like I'm the CS East Coast girls rep. I need to constantly be surfing with other girls. So one of the struggles, it's not a stressor, it's a struggle, and I'm slowly figuring it out, is what does it look like to still have surfing to myself? Um, because that fills my tank. But then what's it look like to share that and bring other people into that? So the, those are some stressors. And then very similar to what Shannon said, man, Christian surfers, oh, they were a family. <laughs> When mine was broken. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so how Shannon mentioned just seeing all these people here, it's so special because, I mean, I found Christian servers when my family was messed up. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're all a little messed up, but my family was extra jacked up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I can say that because God redeemed it, so we're good, mm -hmm. so they're not going to be mad. Um, <laughs> yeah. But man, Christian surfers is that family where they welcome any and everybody. They don't just say it, um, and they don't they don't expect anything out of you. They just want to love you. Mm -hmm. And so now to um, do that for Christian surfers and be a model, and that is, man, what the heck? I get paid for that? <laughs> like, what a privilege. Um, so man, that that outweighs it all that I get to carry such an incredible organization um, just in a little, little, little tiny part of the world. Mm. <laughs> and it was so beautiful because when we just led a Nicaragua trip together for girls only, and Colby's mom came on that trip. So to see the progression of just her family being redeemed and then her mom helping her lead a trip was just so beautiful. It was powerful. Colby's actually going to share a little bit more about that tonight. But um, All right. Question. What would you tell your younger self? No, we'll give you a break, Colby. We'll give you a break. Let's go with Sharon. Or do you need a break, too? I see. <laughs> um... My younger self, I think I would say to work even harder at sort of putting aside that self-doubt that's mm. rung very true with me. I'm going to start crying because you've started that. Mm -hmm. But um, to put aside the self-doubt and to really, really tune into that voice that I always heard was there but didn't always follow it, of go, this is the way, walk in it. That still small voice. And um, not questioning and negotiating and needing so much uh, writing on the wall, for lack of a better word, but um, I'm a very, I like to be structured and know where I'm going, and I think that's hindered some things in my walk with my personal life, within ministry. So my younger self, put away the self-doubt a little bit more and just walk in what God's asked of you. Amazing. <laughs> Mandy. What piece of advice would you give your younger self? Um, something I talk to my kids a lot about is to look up and to look ahead. And I think surfing has a lot um, to do with that. And it has trained them not only to do it in the water, but to do it um, in their everyday life. But I talk about that a lot of how I went through my 20s um, with my head down, just grinding it out and really failed to look up and realize um, what I did today was going to affect tomorrow. And um, I was more concerned with getting to the next day than really looking at the, the broad picture, which is funny that I got to where I am today because I wasn't really that girl who was planning for my future. I was more, like I said, just trying to get through the day and grinding it out, not looking up, not looking at the horizon. Um, so I would tell my younger self to look up, take a breath, um, be grateful, take it all in, mark time. Um, time goes by really fast, and especially when you start having kids and it goes by even faster. <laughs> but um, I think just take a breath and look up and take it in and understand that the, the um, decisions you make today, how much they're going to affect tomorrow, um, and good and bad. You know, everything, mm -hmm. the conversations, the people you meet, the decisions you make. Um, will absolutely affect tomorrow. And when you're in it, you, f you forget that that's actually the case. Mm 
Oh, so true. So, so good. All right, Audrey, what are you going to tell your younger self? Um, a little bit like Sharon, I mean, in the same... Um, for me, it would be, um, as a national director, sometimes uh, I face some issues that take too much space, and I let them take too much space in my life. And then I just think about it days and nights and days and nights, and I waste time mm -hmm. instead of dealing with them but keeping walking. And uh, we've had that a, f a couple of times over the last few years where I've really felt like I've wasted time focusing on things that, yeah, they were not so important and I should have kept walking. That's good. I always tell myself, if I'm thinking about it in the middle of the night, it probably doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> just wait until morning and it probably is going to be not even a worry anymore. So it's true. All right, Colby. I didn't know if this was You're, for me because I'm still my younger self. Yeah, what are you going to tell I'm, your 10-year-old little Colby running around? The baby fat will go away. <laughs> um, definitely. Uh, man, I would, I would tell little Colby, take a chill pill. It's all going to work out. I think very similar to how Mandy was saying, I was just so focused. Uh, am I going to get into this university? Will I go on a radio? Will I meet my husband? Man, so many things that... I lost sleepover, and I can't believe I am where I'm at, but I would say, don't worry, be present, the Lord's got you. It, it's very cliche, but I think where I'm at in my season of life right now, that's what I would tell younger Colby. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, the next question is, what is motivating you right now? So what gets you out of bed in the morning? What gets you excited to get up every single day? Mandy, can we start with you? Um, I have no choice but to get up in the morning. <laughs> Otherwise, True. I'm going to be late for school drop-off, and that means detention. <laughs> um, no, I wake up every morning feeling very, very energized by, by what I do. And I am absolutely energized to get my kids to school and set them up for a successful day. Um, but right behind that is I am so motivated to get to the office and, and do what I do. I absolutely, I, I love it. And if you do something you love, um, like they say, every day is not work. It's you're doing what you love. So mm -hmm. That's great. I think that's what I tell my younger self yeah. is pursue what you love to do. Yeah. It's good. It's awesome you're living that out. Yeah. All right, Sharon. Um, so yeah, I think love drives everything. And at home currently, I homeschool my kids, I support Rose Roy, I run two Airbnbs. So that keeps life busy, but I love every aspect of what that is. I love hospitality, I love loving people, and that's what it is. And doing it with the Lord um, makes it even sweeter. So yeah. Colby, we'll jump over to you. So why do I get up out of bed? Um, for in the morning, I host a morning show, and so I get into work at 5.30, and we go live at 6 a.m., and so I would say what gets me up on Monday through Friday is the listeners. I mean, we had somebody call in last week, and we did this super lame segment. It was about the greatest, the, the largest pumpkin. There's a new U.S. record, if you're wondering. It's 2,650 pounds. And I'm we sure everybody was thinking and that. And we talked <laughs> about it on air. And it was, it was okay. It wasn't that funny. And this lady called in and she said, hey, my husband died a month ago and I haven't laughed that hard. Uh, what? I just was talking about a big pumpkin. And so I think that in knowing that my prayer when I was 17 was, Lord, I want to go into radio ministry. And radio ministry, it's not just being on the radio, but it's ministering to these people in their deep souls. So I would say partly that. Um, and then my paycheck is what is sifting my husband through college uh, so that one day I won't have to work. So that's definitely a gopher right there. Except for with Christian surfers. Oh, always with CS. This is fun. This doesn't work. She's not retiring. No, 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 no. I'm not going anywhere. Six months in. No, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> What about you, Audrey? I, I'd say... Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. um, it's the privilege of being able to do what we do, uh, whether it's with Christian Surfers or with uh, the local church, Surf Church. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the dream. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And Rich just came in the in the room. So when Rich uh, and Reggie left Hosogo and they handed over Surf Church to Powell and I, uh, Powell and me, um, I told Rich that he uh, he made reality the dream I would have never dared to dream. Thank you. That's, that is awesome. Yeah. All right. We're going to do the final question here. So you can spend a little bit more time if you wanted on it. But what would you tell the next generation about the world that they're inheriting? It's a hard one. So we'll start with Mandy. <laughs> you run corporate meetings. You got to be good on your feet. <laughs> I actually had to write notes about this one because um, there's a lot I have to say about this. It's, <laughs> um, I think every mom in this room probably has a lot to say about this one. But um, the one thing I would love to scream in the middle of my office is trust in the Lord and stop thinking the universe. It really, really overwhelms me that um, most people around me are um, thinking that the universe and themselves are gu their guiding light. And um, they, don't, they don't know about the Lord or they've turned away from the Lord. So that's a big one for me and trying to find my own ways of um, getting that across the line. Um, but more like down into detail, I'd say in this world of social media, and unfortunately that's a place I do have to live mm -hmm. um, by for what I do. Um, telling the next generation that I see coming up, even my, my middle schooler and his friends and how much they're obsessed with social media and how much it's driving what they do. Um, I don't think it's going away. You know, there was one moment um, in the last 10 years where I think a lot of us thought it was going away. It's mm -hmm. just a trend. I, I think it's here to stay, and I think it's going to get even more and more and more mm -hmm. impactful. Um, I'm now on my end designing on avatars, and avatars... Um, being a part of your life, um, that is coming, and I don't think, I don't think we are able to run from it. Um, but I'd say what I would tell my, and what I do tell my kids right now is, first of all, look up. You know, stop looking down at your phone. It's going to cause you wrinkles on your neck. Uh, <laughs> um, but get, get outside. Look around. Um, look and be a part of the world around you. Um, don't be so obsessed with yourself. And don't be so obsessed with um, what's happening in front of you on the screen. Be courageous to stand out. Um, there's so many TikTok trends, and the TikTok trend goes quickly. And that is such a resemblance of the society that we're living in, that all of a sudden, whatever it is on TikTok, this week is the trend, and it's okay. It, it, seem, it makes everyone feel like this is okay, and it's not. So what we've been talking about as a family at home and reading Revelations is be careful, because... What you see out there might seem right, but it's wrong. And what seems wrong might look right. And you have to really be careful with that and really learn how to differentiate that and stand strong in your faith. Um, and I'm going to keep it, pounding that into my children as much as I can without turning them off, which um, is you also have to walk that fine line. But yeah. Can I, I ask a follow-up question on that? Sure. Because social media is a space that you have to do in your business. Mm -hmm. So do you think there's a way to navigate social media in a positive way or how it can actually enhance someone's life? Or how do you tell your kids? Because we can tell our kids not to go on it, but mm -hmm. they're going to be on their own someday. Yeah. So in what way can they navigate it so it's a positive impact in their life? Um, I'm trying to figure that out right now myself because my daughter, who's 10, wants to be on it, and I'm, I'm nowhere near that. But I know if at some stage that's going to come. And do I let her post and comment and, and just be kind of um, uh, in the middle of the road, you know? And that's kind of like my, my handle for Z Supply. It's just middle of the road. We're not making a huge impact one way or the other. I just tell my team, we're selling clothes. Stick to that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're inspiring women to feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Stick to that. And we don't follow trends like hashtag Black Lives Matter and go black. We don't follow those trends. And we're a clothing company, and we don't need to stay in your lane. But when you're a child or a teenager or a young adult and you're taking on social media, what's your platform and what's your stand? Um, I think there is a way to use it as a real positive impact. But when you go there, you have to go there 
all the way. And I think you have to, you have to be very, very confident about sticking with that plan. Um, the moment you steer to the left, you know, people notice and they'll call you out and that causes a ton of um, trickle effect of negativity. So I think there is a way to be impactful. I love following the Christian women that are in my feed. I love seeing the positive effect that they're putting out there. Um, but if you're going to choose that lane, you got to choose that lane and go all the way and not falter. It's, it's mm -hmm. too much on uh, the stage yeah. for everyone to see. It's really amazing in the last little bit here, WSL has put out that they don't want women put as objects anymore. So when they're doing camera angles and posting social media, they're very deliberately trying to put them up more as heroes, as icons, not as objectified. And so we can see some trends going, but I think it's something even in our chapters, in our countries, that we need to reemphasize also. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. All right, we'll bounce to this couch. Colby. So what would I tell the next generation? Mm -hmm. uh, first, there's nothing you need to get out of your system. Looking back, mm -hmm. I, I think my 18, 19, 20-year-old self mm -hmm. said, All right, I just got to get partying out of my system, and then I'll be good. No, no, you don't. Like, there's no, if that's in your system, then you need to get church in your system. Um, a little bit more. And so I would say if that's your excuse for going out and doing all these things, like you need to have a really hard self-check. Um, so that would be one thing. And then I would say to be present. Like my thing is I'm a lot cooler in person than I am online. And that's a slogan I think we all should really kind of kind of take hold of just as you were sharing it's not all about what you see on a screen yeah a lot of times that's how we're making a mark for ourselves and that's how we get careers and that's how we make money but what about these one-on-one -on -one relational connections I would say let's not lose sight and let's not lose um, the importance of that especially with people our age It. <laughs> it's magic. Okay. Um, I think we live in a world that's messy and dark, and it's not going to get any better. Um, so I think, and it's going to be harder and harder for the younger generation and even all of us to be the salt and light in the world and in the dark places. And um, I think my one bit of advice would be be confident in your calling because there's going to be lots of stuff that's going to distract you from that calling. And calling changes all the time. Um, I've had many, that changes for seasons. And being confident in your calling only comes from really being at the foot of Jesus because everything else is going to try to take you away from that space. So be close to him, walk with him, um, do life with Jesus and not for Jesus. <laughs> um, I sat under ministry recently and I was like, wow, we do a lot for God, but we need to be with God in that. And um, yeah, be confident in what God has called you to do and don't be distracted by everything else that will try to sway you left or right. Good. All right, you want to finish us out here, Audrey? Yeah. Um... Uh, uh, I would say that um, be surrounded by the right people. Choose the right people to be around you. Mm -hmm. We know how much uh, people have influence on us. So, yeah, be surrounded. Try to make sure you're surrounded by the right people. And also, um, regarding uh, a role in Christian surfers, I'd say um, don't hesitate to ask people who've been there, like we spoke mm -hmm. earlier this week, to come alongside you. And uh, for friends, that's the, one of the first things that I did is I tried to find the, 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 the right people to walk alongside me. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. V, would you mind coming up here for a minute? I know we didn't ask you to do this before. But I feel like um, there's a lot of women in here that are chapter leaders mm -hmm. that are stepping into the positions of a national director. Mm -hmm. Can you just do a prayer for us? I would love to. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Lord, it is good to sit a while with these women and hear the stories of how you have called them and equipped them and positioned them, Lord, that you have um, worked through them over the years past. Lord, thank you that when you poured out your spirit that it was for everyone, 
for men and women. Lord, thank you for um, the testimony of these women and for their courage in stepping out and stepping into the places that you've called them. Lord, uh, we ask that you would continue um, by the power of your spirit to equip and release women. Lord, we're just so thankful that we're in a a mission organisation that releases and equips. And Lord, we, we just love you because we know that that heart comes from you. And so I pray uh, just for your blessing to continue to rest on each of these women here. Uh, I pray that as you stir in the hearts of other women across the world, Lord, that you would remind them that um, you call them into spaces that might seem scary or maybe the doors seem shut, but Lord, we ask that you would um, open the door for them, that you would, (laughs) like you did for Mandy, just grab them by the back of the neck and just push them into those places where they need to be, Lord, because... um, We need all of humanity to step up if we're going to see your kingdom come on this earth. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we just sit in awe of the way that you work on this earth. We pray these things in your mighty and wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you.